the gay audience out there who struggle accepting who they are, dig deep in order to come to self-acceptance and self-love. And we have to rely on each other in this journey we call life to just self-realize and to come to self-awareness of who we are we love and and cherish ourselves just the way we were born and created. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Soulful Intuitive. I wanted to thank you for liking, sharing and subscribing and please if you have any friends or family members who you might think would be interested in our topics, please go ahead and recommend our channel. So we are going to start our episode today talking about synchronicity because that's how the topic today came about. My mother is a very well read and a very intellectual lady. And every time that we get together, we talk about movies and books and she always recommends the authors and the books that she likes. And of course, the last time we were spending time together, she introduced me to this author by the name of Yuval Harari. And he's an historian and a philosopher. He's a Middle Eastern man who was born and raised in Israel. He is a university professor in one of the universities there. And uh, his famous books are Sapiens, Brief History of Humankind, Homo Duos, a History of Tomorrow. He has a bunch of other books, but I didn't memorize them. And uh, so she talked about him with me. We, he even handed, she even handed me her phone. And there was a clip of him talking about his coming out of the closet as a homosexual man. And, and just, you know, uh, it was a very sweet, sweet conversation he was having with that interviewer. And that was it. And then the next morning I woke up, I did my morning routine. I went on YouTube, which I do every morning to listen to something educational or some self-development uh, podcast or something inspirational. And Lex Friedman, who's one of the podcasters that I follow, uh, was apparently had just interviewed Yuval Harari. The YouTube algorithm recommended him and they had just posted that interview 16 minutes before I logged on to YouTube. So I was very excited. I always like to start my Mondays knowing that I'm in the state of flow because the synchronicity tells me that I am doing something right and the universe really wanted me to know of this person and who was unknown to me 24 hours beforehand. So I listened to the podcast, it was a couple hours long, and I learned a lot. So aside from the fact that he's extremely articulate, very charismatic, but he has a way with words and he was very authentic talking about his experience. And so a few things that I learned from him as a homosexual man, and I think all homosexuals, at least most of them, have this struggle and have heard these comments growing up that being homosexual is against nature. And Yuval made a very good point that anything that happens in nature is natural. So we have homosexuality within mammals, uh, even within birds. And since that happens in nature by itself, that makes it natural. So that completely cancels that argument that this is unnatural. But also, he was talking about this other argument that sex is for procreation and if homosexuals can have, can have babies or can procreate, then what's the point? And that was another good point he made that, well, you know, sex in nature happens for a variety of reasons and it happens to show dominance it happens to restore order it happens to display friendship camaraderie kinship and also it happens for recreation 
And all of those aspects of sexuality is present in animal kingdom. So that was another issue that I actually grappled with when I was growing up because, you know, you grew up in this world where you're told that you're wrong, you're abnormal, you're unnatural, and what you're doing is against the laws of nature. And it's, there's no purpose. And because you can't have babies, it makes it futile. So that was that. The third point he was making, which again is something that is heard a lot by the gay community, and that is that our body parts are made for one purpose only. And let's say if you're using your genitals and orifices for anything other than those purposes, then you're doing something against God's will, against the natural laws. So, for example, our mouth has a primary purpose, and that is to eat. But look at what we're doing with our mouths, aside from eating. We sing, use our mouth to kiss, we use our mouth to talk. And those were all purposes that were not necessarily primarily, primary purpose to that specific purpose. Or our hands, for example. Primates use hands to climb trees. And of course, we have evolved from being primates, but we use our hands to touch. We use our hands to play piano, to play instruments. We even use our hands to heal each other, you know, from chiropractor, physiotherapist, massage therapist, energy healers. So are those extracurricular activities done with our hands unnatural? I think not. So that completely makes a, just makes a, a point in terms of that fallacy that homosexuals are using their bodies against and, and their organs and body parts against what Mother Nature had in mind for them. And even though I came out of the closet 25 years ago, and even though I have made my peace with who I am, it was, it was very interesting listening to someone who had to intellectually make peace with who he is, which he has. And I'm sure him coming out of the closet was not a simple, smooth journey, not personally and not with, within his circles, circle of friends and family members. So he was hit with all of these comments all of these misconceptions and and one after another he was proving them wrong and I wanted to share that with my audience if you are gay it's good to know these answers if you come across people who have it in their back pocket to prove to you that there's something wrong with you and if you have family members or friends or loved ones who are gay it's also good to know that and like these days we're hearing a lot about how the gays are uh, and their culture is grooming our kids to be gay and I don't even know where to begin when it comes to that comment but I'm gonna make a clear comparison gay people are born and raised in straight societies in predominantly heterosexual culture we grow up watching straight movies, straight TV shows. We only witness straight or heterosexual romance. We only witness heterosexual romance around us in our own home. Most of us are born into, at least my generation, into a heterosexual family where there was a mom and a dad. And the society tells you the exact same thing, that that's just the way it is. We read the novels, the romance novels that are about a man and a woman. You, we, play, we play video games that have a man, or male or female characters. So if that doesn't groom homosexuals to act and live as heterosexuals, then I don't know what else can do that 
like in reverse. So if you're going to a gay pride, if you are participating in uh, groups where there are some gay people there, if you're talking to people who are gay who are or sharing your experience with you, uh, how is that going to groom you or your kids to just be something that you're not? Because being gay has nothing to do with grooming and being straight has nothing to do with grooming. It is something that you're born with and don't doubt it for a second. And most members of the gay community can tell you the same thing that although maybe they didn't know what it was called, they knew exactly how they felt and they knew exactly their needs and what they had to pursue in terms of, you know, romance and who they have to be with at the end of the day in order to feel balanced and in order to feel happy and complete and joyful. So I wanted to share that with you coming from a philosopher, university professor, an intellectual and also a historian. Uh, And I encourage people to go find him read his books, watch his videos and lectures because sometimes it is important to hear from, you know, a prominent member of our society who is trained to be articulate, who's trained to be very knowledgeable and wise and who's trained to just touch on a, a wide audience. And that's the only way to raise awareness that's the only way to fight back any fallacies about anything because unfortunately our society and we live in a world where our society is looking at things in a very simplistic way we have reduced nature to black and white and to left and right and up and down and that's the exact opposite of what this universe is we live in this universe where there are two spectrums and then everything in between and diversity is the key to survival and the continuation of this beautiful universe we live in and the fourth you know and i also don't think that people who make those counter arguments and and believe in those fallacies i don't believe that they're uh, misguided they're they're bad people they're just misguided and the only way to cross those boundaries and thresholds is to reach out to people who yeah, who are for whatever reasons threatening to you or uh, you find them hard to fathom or swallow and understand and by reaching out to them just be very genuine be very honest and ask questions and they will answer your questions and when you shine a light up on some things that you don't understand and you just maintain a dialogue sooner or later the truth is revealed to you and you just form these bonds that you find very valuable and at the end of the day we are all the same and yet we're all very different and it's in our differences that we find strength and to, and together when we bring our weak strengths and weaknesses together that oh like together we're strong and unbreakable and and eternal and i just wanted to share that uh point of view that he he had and the way that he was very convincing and using logic to prove to the other side that being different in this case being gay is not something that is unnatural and uh for the gay audience out there who struggle accepting who they are just go and listen to him and people like him who had to dig deep in order to come to self-acceptance and self-love and we have to rely on each other in this journey we call life to just self-realize and to come to self-awareness of who we are we love and 
and cherish ourselves just the way we were born and created. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in our next episode. Bye.